Welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. In today's lesson, we will learn about the subdominant chord or the four chord. We will look at how the four chord is used in a 1-4-1 one, one chord progression. Then we'll take a look at repertoire that will involve tonic, subdominant, and dominant chords as accompaniment to the melody using the 1-4-1-5-1 one, one, one chord progression. Let's get started by learning about the subdominant chord. Four chord, also called the subdominant chord, builds on the fourth note up from the one chord. In the key of C major, the one chord is the C triad. The four chord is the F triad. To make the chord progression 1 to 4 easier to play and sound better, the fourth chord may be played in the second inversion by moving the top note of the fourth chord down an octave. The reason for playing the fourth chord in the second inversion is so that we don't need to move very far in between the two chords. If we play both chords in their root positions, we will have to physically pick up our hands to do so. By playing the fourth chord in the second inversion, now the notes in both chords are right next to each other. This 1-4-1 one, one chord progression can be played in all major keys. As you can see, the top notes moves up a whole step, the middle note moves up a half step, and the bottom note remains the same. Notice that all these 1-4-1 one, one chord progressions sound alike, only the pitches change, like the transpositions we have talked about. Let's take a look at a piece by Leopold Mozart who is the father of the music prodigy Amadeus Mozart. This piece will show how the chord progression 141 is used as an accompaniment in music. Let's first determine the chords or the harmony to see where the 141 chord progression is. The piece has one flat beginning and ending on F, so we're in F major. The first chord is built on F, spelling F, A, and C. However, the C is played by the right hand. You will often find chords built this way in music, splitting in between the two hands. This is clearly a root position chord, since all the notes are stacked right on top of each other, a third apart. Since it's built on F, it's an F major chord, or one chord in the key of F. The next chord is a B flat major chord in its root position. Notice that the fifth of the chord F comes before the actual chord. Not play with the chord, but play within the same measure. B flat is built four notes above F. So it's a four chord. Oftentimes we'll play the bottom two notes of a root position chord with five and three. But in this case, two and one are used. Which means that the movement is actually not an issue here. So a four chord in its root position 
will work well here. No need for the second inversion of the four chord. Then we go back to one chord in measure five. Here we have found the one for one chord progression. The broken chord in measure seven. If we play all the notes together, we will realize that it's a five seven chord without the E. on the right hand is what we call a passing tone, which simply acts as a passing note to go from B flat to G. It's not part of the chord. The last measure, we're clearly back to tonic again. Let's play the 1-4-1 one, one chord progression in the music again. 1 4 1 followed by 5-7 1 Now let's add the right hand melody and play the A section together. Watch out for the places shown on the screen that will require shifting positions. has a fairly short B section, only four measures long. Harmonically, it's also pretty straightforward. It's all built on a C major triad, or the five chord of F major. Let's play this B section. part of the A section returns to finish off the piece. Just a few technical things to think about for this piece. First, the motion for all the figurations involving slur notes connecting to a staccato note is down, up, in one gesture. Start high and drop into the key, and release and bounce for the staccato note. When dropping into the key, be gentle with it. Use your wrist to sink into the key. Otherwise, there will be unnecessary accents with harsh sound. Imagine dropping your arm into a bed of clouds. Soft and gentle. Remember for the staccato notes, it's always a light, gentle bounce. Not a forced, sharp bounce. This motion happens throughout the piece, like it measures 9 and 10. Remember to play the slur notes in one gesture, then bounce off the staccato notes with your wrist. The half notes in this piece because they're always followed by staccato notes, which are up motions, the half notes are played with down motions. A 
Again, be mindful with the drop into these long notes. Now let's play from the top, Minuet in F Major by Leopold Mozart. This piece Mozart's Minuet in F, we saw how a 1-4-1 chord progression is used in music. If you look closely, you will see that the A section begins with a 1-4-1 chord progression and ends with a 5-1. Combining these two, we have 1-4-1-5-1 chord progression. Next, we will look at a piece with the same chord progression. The 14151 one chord progression is essentially a combination of two chord progressions, 1571 and 141. One. Notice that the 4 chord is in the second inversion, and the 57 chord is in its first inversion, omitting a third. This will make it easier to move from and to the tonic chord without having to jump from chord to chord. Try this chord progression in the different keys shown on the screen. In this next piece, Kumbaya, we will see that the left hand uses the 14151 one chord progression to accompany the melody in the right hand. Spend a few minutes first identify the key, and then see if you can identify each chord by writing down the correct Roman numerals and its inversions. Check that you have the correct chords on the screen here. By now, you should be able to see the 14151 chord progression. Notice that the tonic chord is repeated a few times before going to the 4 and 5 chords. In measure 9 through 12, the 141 chord progression is repeated even twice before going to the 5 1. Let's play the chord progression on the left hand once. 1. 1. One. 
your melody. Watch out for fingering changes. One, two, four. One, three, five. One, two, four. In measure eleven, the fingering indicates a finger substitution, which means that we will hold the key down with finger four first. Then shift to finger five. This will allow us to continue to play the rest of the piece at ease. Let's play the right hand once. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. 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 One, two. Let's play hands together, paying attention to the fingering changes on the right hand and the harmonies on the left hand. In this lesson, we learn about the subdominant chord or the four chord. We also learn two new chord progressions, one four one and one four one five one, and how they're used as harmonies to serve as accompaniment to the melody. For your homework, continue to practice these chord progressions in different keys, as well as the repertoire we have learned in lesson today. See you next time.